An 84-year-old white Kansas City man is now facing two felony charges, and if found guilty, life in prison after sh a shooting that has grabbed the nation's attention. According to family and lawyers, for 16-year-old black teenager Ralph Yarrell, it happened when he was trying to pick up his brothers one night last week. They say he accidentally rang the wrong doorbell, and the man inside shot him in the head and the arm. He had to run to three different houses before someone would help him. That has led to protests over the weekend and a massive outpouring of support on social media. A GoFundMe for Jarl's hospital bill has surpassed $2 million. He has been released from the hospital, thank goodness, but has a long recovery ahead. Tonight, I am joined by Glenn Rice, investigative reporter for the Kansas City Star. Glenn, we understand President Biden has spoke with Ralph Jarl's family. What can you tell us about this young man and what really happened? The more I see it covered, I keep thinking, I must be missing something. How could this possibly happen? Think about all the times in my life as a teenager, I rang people's doorbell to sell hoagies and cookies and go Christmas caroling. He was just an innocent kid ringing a bell. Yeah, that is correct. Ralph is a 16-year-old junior at uh, one of the schools in our Northland uh, portion of Kansas City. Uh, on that day, he had uh, was summoned to pick up his his young siblings, twin brothers, uh, at a house and mistakenly went to the wrong house. At that time, uh, when he rang the doorbell, a gentleman emerged, uh, uh, Andrew Lester emerged, and uh, they uh, he told him to leave, and and uh, he fired a shot and uh, struck him in the head, and uh, Ralph fell to the ground and. Uh, uh, Lester, according to prosecutors, uh, shot him again. Uh, Ralph struggled to, to several other houses where he finally was able to get help. Uh, police came and uh, took him to the hospital. So uh, right now the community is breathing a sigh of relief uh, from what I've from what I understand. And but yet uh, there's still some concerns about how this case was handled and what does this mean for children today? Just being able, if you knock on the wrong door, this could happen to you. So I was just saying, think about all the times kids ring doorbells for a variety of reasons. How come he couldn't get help at the couple of other houses? Did they not answer the door? They wouldn't help them? They weren't home? It was a combination of both. Uh, sometimes they didn't, they did not answer or they refused to. In one case, when, when a person did help him, he uh, told Ralph to lie on the ground with his hands behind his back. Uh, as, as, as unsettling as that may seem, a young man was shot and he still has to... Uh, uh, more or less surrender himself to, sh to prove that he's not harmed, that he's not, uh, can cause any type of harm. Tell us, uh, you mentioned it a moment ago about this criticism, that, 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 that charges were not filed early, there's been delay, there hasn't been information. What can you tell us? Uh, as it stands, as it stands right now, the uh, prosecutors have, have, have charged him. Uh, there was some questions about whether, um, uh, of whether he would be able to uh, speak to authorities, but apparently he did speak to investigators on the night that he was shot. And uh, and then it took some time for prosecutors to and crime teams to gather information and do uh, specific type of testing to assure that, that they had their case uh, in order, so. The prosecutor did say there was a racial component to this, but he didn't go beyond that. What can you tell us? Well, as you know, uh, uh, Ralph is uh, African, is, is black. Uh, the perpetrator in this case is white. Uh, some would assume that because Ralph is black and the, the gentleman who shot him is white, that there may, be, there may have been some fear regarding, uh, uh, you know, uh, whether he could, uh, uh, you know, cause any harm to him. Uh, but uh, that was, that seems to be the case. You have an emerging black population uh, that is uh, moving to the north uh, portion of our city, and uh, in some cases that uh, is uh, is unsettling to to people who've been there for for a very very long time. That's ridiculous. They're moving there because they want to be part of a safer community. What did they think? This young man was carrying a loaded saxophone. He's a he's a model student. What can you tell us about Ralph? But also, what can you tell us about Andrew Lester, the 84 year old who shot him? What what do you know about these two young these two men? Well, as far as uh, Andrew Lester, we know that he's he's 84 years old. He has been uh, a resident of that community for quite some time. Uh, we don't know if he has any type of criminal background or what he did for a living. We know that he has family uh, in the area as well as elsewhere. Uh, neighbors have told uh, different media outlets that he's a 
is, is well liked, well respected. Uh, people in that neighborhood say they look out for each other. Uh, Ralph, on the other hand, as I mentioned before, is a junior at a state high school. By all accounts, an honor student, a kid who's well respected. He paid, played uh, bass clarinet. He had dreams of becoming uh, an engineer with goals of wanting to attend Princeton uh, when he graduated. Well, I hope he can still do that. I'm a Luckily, he is home and recovering, and we are sending him our very, very best.